team were working. I scanned the floor of one of the rooms that showed something else metal, but it was two buried silver trays under fresh concrete. We excavated the floor to ensure the trays were not covering something more sinister. As it was a big old house, I wanted to get in under the floorboards to search with the radar, as I knew that voids under floors were perfect places to hide bodies. It's done, I was told by one of the police search advisors. Well, we need to check it anyway. I'd like to get the GPR under there and see the rest of the house, I reasoned. But I was told that SGI, our GPR and myself, were not required, as a thorough search had been conducted. A few years later, I probably would have stuck to my guns and made a fuss. But there was only so much I could do in a crime scene. And if those in charge didn't want me to search a certain area, or told me that it had already been searched, I had to respect their wishes. We left the job, trusting that all the underfloor spaces had been thoroughly searched. In total, there were three searches of the property, and dogs were used twice. But John was not found, and the case went to court without a body, enabling Pereira to insist that John was still alive. In October 2004, Pereira was tried and found guilty of murder. A week after the verdict, before sentencing, he admitted to the killing, and claimed it was an accident. He told police where the body was. John's remains were hidden under floorboards. They were badly decomposed, but they enabled detectives to establish that John's hands had been tied behind his back, his shirt was pulled over his head and knotted, and a surgical stocking had been used as a gag. Pereira was sentenced to a minimum of 16 years. It was one of those frustrating cases where opinions differed, and where, if things had gone right initially and I'd been allowed to search where I wanted, the family would have been spared many months of uncertainty.